it's fairly common for scientists to work together with others in their field. But at Washington University's Center for Innovation in Neuroscience and Technology, there's a different type of collaboration going on. The Center for Innovation in Neuroscience and Technology, it's all about this idea of effective creativity. Essentially, creating transformative ideas that are really going to have a big impact in neurosurgery and the neurosciences. Uh, specifically, what we do is we really bring together people from very different backgrounds. Neurosurgery, the neuroclinical fields, neurointerventional radiology, engineering, mathematics, computer science, material science, so that we can really think about any type of problem that affects medicine in a very broad and multidisciplinary way. Following the premise that no one person can be an expert at everything, the center fosters partnerships that are bringing about cutting-edge innovations. Really, it's across the neuro space, ranging from novel techniques in uh, treating brain tumors to brain-computer interfaces, thought-controlled devices, novel imaging, novel ways of doing uh, spine surgery and novel spinal instrumentation, instruments that we use in the operating room, such as brain retractors. Uh, so really, um, if there's a problem, we're interested in tackling it. The solutions to those problems range in size, from large pieces of hardware to help surgeons bend titanium rods for use in spinal operations, to some so small you can't see them with the naked eye, like this nanosensor that detects blood flow in heart patients. Going from very small to not that small, a little bit bigger, uh, we're creating special types of membranes and biomaterials that have special type of enzyme capabilities. They can break down pathologic proteins. We're thinking of using that as a technique to treat such things as Alzheimer's or even prion disease where uh, you have something that is in your nervous system that you want to get out and, uh, um, uh, and we can potentially do that by uh, essentially creating almost a brain dialysis system, something that can filter out the unwanted uh, proteins. Still in the pipeline is a technology called brain-computer interfaces or neuroprosthetics that quite literally allows patients with paralysis on one side to use their thoughts to control a machine. How it works is the patient wears a special headset that picks up signals from the brain and wirelessly transfers them to an exoskeleton on the paralyzed limb. Then, just by using their thoughts, they're able to, for example, open and close their paralyzed hand. Although the device is currently still in the clinical testing phase, Dr. Luthart says it's showing great promise. Really excited about what we're seeing so far, so I think that is uh, uh, going to really be something that is transformative in the care of stroke. The concept of bringing in the brain power from a variety of disciplines to work on a single concept was innovated here at Washington University. But the program has become so successful, it's now being used as a model at other institutions throughout the country. Historically, uh, a lot of academic institutions really thought about it's almost like a farming model, meaning that there's different laboratories, they're doing, each is doing their own thing, and as they come up with a great scientific finding or create a new technology, they try to harvest those and then work on translating them. Really, kind of our effort is different. We start with the problem, a clinical problem, and then we find a whole bunch of people, we bring them together in novel ways, and then we are really solution driven, and then try to really try to figure out technical ways to solve that problem. Surprise is the norm in a lot of ways, in that uh, as we iterate these ideas between a lot of different people thinking about it in very different ways, it never ceases to amaze me how you really can see absolutely unexpected cool things happen out of a simple conversation. It's almost like a smart people dating service. So it isn't just simply the technology that we create, but you have people who become very comfortable with interacting with each other. And it, it's really spawned off a number of interesting scientific collaborations, technical collaborations, which would have otherwise not happened. For HEC-TV Innovations, I'm Suzanne Vanderhoff.